Gabby, just quickly. Igor, get out of here. We're Sorry. recording. Oh, yeah, you were a very hot kid. Right? Yeah. Igor, this isn't your episode. Yeah, you're a super hot kid, though. Get out. Whoa. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm sweating. Oh, I have to respond to a text. Oh, I'm not allowed to text during the show, but you, you are. Well, fucking switch. Igor, yeah, on. we are filming. Oh, sorry. oh my God, he just like doesn't respect us. Or our so process. Shut the know. fuck up, Igor. So this is actually a very serious episode. Oh. I think that it's, today would be a good time for you to talk about something you haven't previously talked about on this channel. Oh, this is the one where we do that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, for those of you that have read my book, Bad With Money, available now. Everywhere um, books are sold. Everywhere books are sold. Audiobook read by me. Uh, I say in the book uh, that I have bipolar 2, and I've never said that before uh, in any public forum. The mental health chapter of the book is my favorite chapter. This is because, a big moment. Yeah, yeah, because I I talk about the whole history of it, like how it started and like what, how long it took me to get a diagnosis and to like know that that's what was happening. And well, then, it's very interesting because now that I know more about it, looking back on your past behavior, mm -hmm. classic. Yeah, of course. Textbook bipolar. Yes. But I had at the time I was like, what is she doing? Oh, well, <laughs> so, but I was also like, what is she doing yeah. in the third person? I, I would have like these episodes where I would just like be so flying high and like get a million things done and, uh, and like, feel invincible and also like you know make a bunch of uh sabotaging sexual decisions uh not not my normal uh pleasant hoedom but like sabotaging <laughs> and then i would like totally crash and right. be just like devastated on the floor crying and the big thing with the depression is that it was like physically painful yeah like i would be like my chest hurts and my stomach hurts and my back hurts and you can't move and you can't walk and you're like you're you just feel uh like you I mean, the sad thing is I would go, like, I think I need to die so I stop feeling this way because I don't know how I will ever stop feeling this way. And, like, wanting to, uh, not being able to sleep and, um... I think there was also a real recklessness. Well, yeah, so I bought a plane ticket to Paris with, uh, money I didn't have, flew to Paris, didn't have any money in Paris, had a complete mental breakdown, got mugged. Why do you think that, since you've been open about like depression and anxiety, why did it take you so long to acknowledge the bipolar? Um, because I think I didn't want people to say she's crazy. Like I didn't want my opinions to get written off or I didn't want people to not respect my work or for people to say, you know, oh, she only did that or she only finished that because she's manic and crazy or like, Oh, that your opinion doesn't matter. Like, your your opinion on feminism, your opinion on politics, like, they can just go, oh, well, you know, she's fucking bipolar, so. But you felt like the world is accepting enough of, like, anxiety and depression. But and not, of, be, right. not of bipolar disorder. Yeah, for sure. And you still feel that way? Yeah, because people are, they use it as, like, a flippant, you know, like, oh, she's being bipolar, or they, they, um, think of it as scary, right? Like they're yeah. like, oh, the oh, the bipolar person is like a murderer or something. You know what I mean? And I feel like even I, until recently, like didn't understand that like with medication, it can can it can stabilize you. Yeah, like, I think there was like it made me for whatever reason. I grew up thinking it was kind of like something you couldn't ever really tackle. Yeah, know, even though you can definitely. I'm medicated. I have therapists and a psychiatrist. I'm better now than I when I wasn't medicated, for sure. Huge difference. And I, I thank you. And I would always like swing. I just thought like you had to swing from super uh, hyper, uh, like not sleeping. Every idea is the best idea, and also like talking really fast and um, being so like overwhelmed with like options and ideas that you like can't focus on one option. So there was mm -hmm. a lot of of. Distraction Twi and twittering, twittering but and like you yeah. being very manic online. I yeah, a lot of sure. Yeah, and then which I'm like not. I I'm like way away from Twitter now, mm -hmm. which is a plus. Highly recommend. And then that would happen, and then I would get really down on myself and be like, I'm a. It was never like a middle ground. It was either like flying high or like I'm a piece of garbage. No one likes me. I should never do anything again. Can't stop crying for weeks. Lay on the floor. Whatever. You know why I didn't want to come out about it? Because I was nervous that creatively it made me better. I thought that it was kind of a superpower that I had these 
manic episodes and I could like get so much done. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, but then is it worth like three months of literally wishing you were dead? No. No, absolutely not. And I would work during those three months. That's the other thing is I would like keep working on stuff, but I would just, but I was just like, I was totally uh, drained and disassociated and a shitty person to be around and, and like literally just like, I don't know how to say it in a more flowery way, but like literally just like want to die. I will never feel good again. I need to be dead. When did you finally acknowledge what it was and and get on the right meds for that? Because the meds for bipolar is mood stabilizers, which is different than SSRIs. Lamictal slash Lamotrigin, baby. Well, I said something to my mom about it when I was like 20. And she was like, oh no, you're just moody. And I was like, okay. And then uh, (laughs) I had like a breakdown in 2000 in 2008 and then I had one in 2012 and then I had one again in 2016 so just on the on the election cycle (laughs) I seem to have total mental breakdowns (laughs) each time like a psychiatrist or or a you know because I would be on SSRIs for depression and like a psychiatrist or a therapist would always say you have do you have you considered that you have bipolar and I would go no and then and then 2016 my therapist was like have you considered that you have bipolar? And I was like, you might be onto something. (laughs) I'm still not perfect. I still have like terrible impulse control. Um, Nobody's perfect. I mean, I think that's what a lot of people think about meds is that it will just make you not you and just like a robot. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. To me, meds are like, when you're not on meds, for me, like this is where the pendulum Mm -hmm. swings. And then when you're on meds, it's just, you're still swinging. Yeah, that's You're just true. not flinging as far across the room. I still love to just like, ca- just like, th- just cause trouble. Like, you know, just. You've been caused trouble in slight, a while. Slight mania. Not to you. Oh, who are you causing trouble to? I love just like a slight manic, like, let me throw a bomb at something and see what happens. Uh, who doesn't? But I also still am depressed all the time. I don't feel great today. Yeah, but you're going through stuff. Yeah. So I just feel like you know, a little drained. That's part of it is, is yeah. realizing your own signs and signals and like, mm-hmm. you know, and then being like, okay, so maybe I need to be sleeping more during this time or mm-hmm. eating better or working out more or, you know, like the more like homeopathic mm-hmm. remedies for like mood stabilization. Yeah. I have to do these exercises for my glute muscles now because of my muscle spasms. That's cool. So I just want to say that uh, I have bipolar disorder. If you have bipolar disorder... It'll be fine. You just gotta, you just gotta acknowledge it and and do something to be working on it, whether it's meds or meditation or whatever. But like, I wasted, I don't know, eight years denying it when I could have just like done something about it. And also, you always say, if you wouldn't disparage someone else for something, why would you think that people would disparage you, or why would you care if people disparage you? Because that just means that they're bad people. So when I would be worried that people would say that I was crazy for having bipolar disorder and not want to work with me or not care about my opinions, then if I wouldn't do that to someone, then why would I? The people you want to interact with wouldn't do it to you. Right, and you always say that, so. Pretty cool. So buy Allison's non-existent book. Look, I'm trying to pitch this thing and no one will buy it. (laughs) I've been so well behaved. You've been so good for so long. I think for the last couple years, I've been so well behaved. And I, where is my medal? Where is my parade? I'll get you a prize. Do you want a prize? Yes, because I feel like I've been a really good girl. You really, I, that's, you know what? It was dumb of me not to have already gotten you a prize. 